We know that you know our secret. What secret? Vampires are real. Kind of tickles. That is worse than a Bible. That burns my eyes. I'm changing. I'm becoming stronger. TGIF. It's five o'clock somewhere. Coworkers die. Vampire roommates, they're forever. JD. Yee! Yeah. Hello, I am Catherine Van Arendonk. I am a critic at Vulture, and I am so thrilled to be here at, with this amazing group of people for a What We Do in the Shadows panel. I love this show very, very much. I am sure if you are watching this, you do as well. So please let me welcome, uh, we have executive producer and co-showrunner Paul Sims. We have executive producer and co-showrunner Stephanie Robinson. Um, he plays Laszlo. Please welcome Matt Barry. He, she plays Nadja. Please welcome uh, Natasha Dimitrio. He plays Nandor. Please welcome Kevin Novak. He plays Guillermo. Please welcome Harvey Guillen. And he plays Colin Robinson. Please welcome Mark Prooch. Hello. I'm, I'm so thrilled uh, to be here with all of you. Um, it is, it is a very strange time to be doing any kind of panels. Uh, and I wonder if you could start off by just, uh, you could give me a sense of what you imagine your characters might be doing in quarantine. Who would like to go first? Um, is anyone, first of all, I wonder, I think it's, very curious to think about what um, Nandor and uh, Guillermo would be doing, sort of like what their, how their relationship at this moment might be changing if they were stuck in a house, the house even more together. Does that seem true? A little strained maybe. Mm. Um, a lack of footfall, <laughs> a lack of victims. I, I always imagine that maybe, um, so I have to log on to my Amazon account in the Apanion app. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> and I imagine that Nando is getting Guillermo to order lots of uh, delivery food and mm. then swooping in and just taking out the delivery driver. I think that would mm. be a good, good ploy. That's... Harvey, does that seem like how would Guillermo feel even more stuck? Would he be, I mean, what is, what is, as the only, Human, I, mean, I guess it brings up the question, like, could the vampires even get COVID and how that would change their responses? Um, right. I guess yeah. if, if I have to go back and, in, in, you know, we left off where the story left off and that would be an sure. situation to be in the house and be like, so we're stuck in here. Um, well, yeah, I, I, it, it would make things really awkward. I think we would have mm. a lot of uh, house meetings. <laughs> I think I think Guillermo would be the uh, uh, since the vampires wouldn't even really care about COVID. I think Guillermo would be the only one wearing a mask, and I think they would constantly be telling him, "Take the stupid mask off." What is what? Why are you wearing that costume? Mm, yeah, like that Guillermo. sounds right to me. Um, although it does seem like then they would need to wear masks so they didn't seem weird outside with the rest of to like give away their identities. So they would that. definitely be the sort of people that wear the masks under their nose. <laughs> that was my next question. <laughs> yeah, I don't I, I mean, Colin Robinson would be a no masker, but for <laughs> obvious reasons. <laughs> as far as I know, they don't watch any news. So I don't think they'd even, no. they wouldn't even know that there was a pandemic and, if, and they wouldn't recognize it. I feel like they've lived through millions of pandemics, so they'd just be like, oh, here we go again. That's brilliant. Mm -hmm. And then they've worked out over the years ways that it's quite good because everyone's at home, sort of low energy, not much sunlight, low vitamin D, and they I think they'd actually really take advantage of it. And yeah, yeah mm -hmm. a lot of work getting rid of, like really stressed out, having to clear out people that might have COVID and he has to touch them. <laughs> so you know, there would be in a lot of PPE. <laughs> There'd be a story where we find out that one of these guys was responsible for like the last pandemic, the Spanish flu. Like it was one of them. <laughs> yeah, well, bats, right? Probably it came over from bats. And so yeah. that's some kind of, yeah, that's how you would tie it in. 
<laughs> Although uh, Natasha saying that it's a very low energy uh, mark that makes me realize it would be tough times for Colin Robinson, uh, vampire wise during a pandemic. Yeah, the working at home. I mean, he feeds at his office. And so <laughs> he would have to go into, you know, we, I'm in Palm Springs right now and there's a, a, a a pet store and yesterday or two days ago we made national news because some lunatic wouldn't put a mask on and um so i think that's what i would be doing is mm. going without masks getting in arguments claiming it's my constitutional right and you know being that sure. type of person i think we've all been on enough zooms though that i'm confident that colin could bring <laughs> by a zoom. i was yeah. gonna say it feels like a ripe a ripe opportunity yeah yeah. Well, so season two, I mean, so much fascinating stuff in season two. Um, and one of the things that I think, you know, the obviously Guillermo's arc is the one that sort of shapes shapes the season. Um, but one thing, uh, Harvey, that I know that you had mentioned at some point was that you have this little idea that in addition to being now a, somebody who wants to be a vampire and a vampire hunter, you kind of sometimes think of your relationship with Nandor as like maybe Guillermo loves Nandor a little bit. I wonder if you could talk about that. And then Kayvon, I want you to talk about whether Nandor loves Harvey back or Guillermo back. Uh, I think I just made the choice early on to uh, make Guillermo be uh, crossing the line of being infatuated with this boss. Like it started off as uh, I really want to learn from this person and eventually become just like him. And then you know, admiration became a little bit of an infatuation. And then that's, those are really blurry lines that you can get crossed in. Sure. Uh, so the approach that I took was always just, he does everything with love and with, you know, like he, why does he put up with this shit? Like, why does he still, you know, here? Yeah. It's because I think deep down inside, he ends up protecting the whole household, even though when the rest of the vampires are complete jerks to him, he still saves them because he is human and he's driven by, you know, emotion and desire and like, just like any other human. And so he does, he tries to do the right thing. And, and even when everyone else around him is treating him like shit, he's going to try to do the right thing. Hmm. Do you feel like uh, Nandor loves Guillermo, Kevin? I think deep down inside he, you know, I think there was a great moment last season. And that was my, I think she was asking me, Guillermo. Oh. I'm happy to have was asked everyone. the direct question. This is the go. kind of shit that I have to put up with. <laughs> I was going to say that it was a great moment that, that Kayvon, uh, you know, we had in the, in the when he leaves the household and Kayvon comes and he does this like, you know, great scene. And we're talking to Paul about this, that we just saw them completely like you. We don't need each other, but we need each other. You, in that love that they have was displayed in that bedroom scene, I think, in a mm. weird way. Yeah. Okay, sorry, Kayvon, we, we cut you off before. That's all right, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I would say, yeah, he he, he needs Guillermo, definitely. Mm. And I, I guess he's, he's, he's wrestling with his own feelings towards Guillermo, and I think that is, that could be headed in a very dangerous direction for, for Nando, because you know he can't be he can't be falling again mm. and not after his you know 53 marriages or 47 <laughs> marriages to um so yeah i'm i'm excited to see what uh what happens with that relationship mm. but it's yeah it's going to get rocky yeah it seems it seems that way um, Natasha and Matt, you have an amazing episode this season where you have to, you become, you already were, but you remember that you like being musicians um, and you do a lot of songs together. Um, can you talk a little bit about what that was like? And Matt, like you, you are a legit musician. Is it hard to perform illegit. in a way? <laughs> is it hard to perform in a way that is like clearly beneath like Laszlo is not as good a musician as you are. Is that difficult to play? No, because these things are usually sort of 30 seconds long. And if they work, then I'll just pinch them and kind of use them for uh, a fully formed song sort of later down the line. So it's just demo work, really. <laughs> but um, <laughs> no, no, I mean, it is, it, is, it, is good, it is good fun sort of having to do something which 
only last that sort of short amount of time because you have to get all the ideas in that one space and um mm. tash and i had a lot of fun doing it we just kind of locked ourselves in one of the rooms in the studio and just did them all you know and yeah you know it was a fairly sort of uh it was it was good it was good fun to do i mean i can't remember you'll have to talk a bit more about it i mean like we did them all in one day didn't we lyric yeah. wise yeah, well, there was a bunch that were written, which were amazing. But then obviously we were going to be filming it for a day. So we like wrote some other ones and we got some ideas. But yeah, it was so, I mean, anything like that is just the most fun. Give me a microphone. And, you know, I am a true singer. I've just yet to be discovered. So sure. it's really kind of the writers to see that in me. I, you know, I used mm -hmm. to sing outside a lot of their writing rooms, just hopefully planting a seed. And it worked. <laughs> um, yeah, and it was a, it's an absolute... I mean, dream because Matt can actually play instruments and has actually got a musical a musical earlobe. So, um, yeah, but it's it was that old thing as well. If you launch into a song badly, but you launch into it with confidence, <laughs> people will always pay attention, and it will look, you know, sort of genuine. If you yeah. look like you're slightly unsure of it because it's awful. That's when it's lost. I think if you launch into anything, you know, as if it's the best thing in the world, even though it's nonsense. I don't know, it's just you know, one way of that, working. That day we got, we were filming and, and Mark had to sit in the audience watching us. And then at the end, obviously they couldn't put it in the episode because they wouldn't have had enough time. But we got Mark on stage to like, in, we just improvised him coming up on stage as Colin Robinson and singing. And that was actually one of the most disturbing things I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, what was the song you sang? <laughs> what is he saying? How does Colin Robinson sing? Uh, he kind of raps. Yeah, the oh, opposite no. of what Matt's talking about. Uh, with little confidence at first, and then he gets really into it. <laughs> I uh, will, yeah. I will, just for the Comic-Con audience, I will give a little teaser for next season. If you enjoy the idea of Colin Robinson singing, you're going to be <gasps> very happy. <gasps> with now That's I'm all excited I can tell too. You. <laughs> that's news also for Mark, by the way. <laughs> it is news for me too. <laughs> Dear God. Very exciting. <laughs> this seems really risky. Like you do something on set and you do it for fun, and then the writers see you and then they write it into a later episode. That seems like really dangerous territory for like you you try things out and then sort of it pops into a script later and you think, oh no. It's like you singing. I think um, it's what makes it so fun. It's just yeah. everyone's uh we're all dedicated to being silly. So I don't think there's anything anyone's ever done that, that, that we've put in an episode where they've been like, oh, I really don't want to be that way. Everyone is full on happy to look silly and stupid in a clever way. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wonder if you could just go around and for each of the actors, if you could tell me what your favorite thing to play for your character, like what sort of scenes you really look forward to for your character. Um, but I'm also really curious what scenes you really love to watch some other castmate do. Like, you know that somebody's gonna get some specific scene and you're like, oh man, I'm so excited to watch to watch that happen. Um, Harvey, can you go first? Um, I, I really enjoyed this last season uh, doing the action stuff, just the sure. fighting points and all that. That was nice to do uh, and to be able to play kind of like two different, you know, um, personalities, one at home with the vampires where he's submissive and kind of quiet to them and then go outside and kick some ass, you know, <laughs> mentality. Yeah. Um, so that was fun and, and love that stuff. Uh, for the scenes, I love what, I mean, everyone in, you know, in this cast is so funny and like, I love watching just the confessionals like you know one of my favorite oh. last season is when Tosh is talking about when she babysits the next door neighbor and she's and she's looking for her in the wall and she's like mama mama <laughs> like that's just like stuff like that uh and then you know and Matt's just like music like episode was hilarious and lucky brute like that whole episode was gold and one of my favorites and then just cave on just I can't even do scenes in front of him because he's literally the funniest person and makes me break character. <laughs> so just any scene that he does is amazing. And then again, with, you know, Mark, everyone here is just like, I'm always on set, just in awe of like how 
great and lucky we are to like work with each other. <coughs> nice. Um, let's see, Kayvon, what scenes do you love and what do you love to watch other people do? Well, I really enjoy my scenes with with Harvey because mm. there's some kind of there's some tenderness there and you know apart from that I really like the the house meeting scenes when we're all together because there's always the potential of it just spinning out into something else <laughs> in the in the fancy room and it usually does and then it becomes like the wild west and Mark will just be shooting from one end and Matt will be at the other and then Natasha will be there and it'll just be like a a gunfight of, of <laughs> hilarity and then none great, of it will end up metaphor. in the actual show <laughs> but my bits some of the others will. but yeah uh, yeah natasha um i love doing talking heads with matt that's a mm -hmm. huge big fun thing to do i mean i got to do a scene one-on-one -on -one with mark in this past series and that was hell amazing because mark is so horrible to me and it makes me die with laughter um and um, geez, and i love um i love doing those scenes in the fancy room and i love like i got to do a scene with all these amazing um uh like women in that scene and when we go to the next door neighbor's house and that was so much fun because they were they were so good it was so funny and i love doing stuff with sean the neighbor anthony atamanik he's so i love watching him because he blows my mind and then I love it when Nando has really thick stuff to say because it's so, it's just like, you're so, how are you a warrior, but you're that stupid. <laughs> um, I love, no, no one does sort of like passive aggressive, like, or like really good at actually sort of like quite sort of earnestly falling over than them mm. Harley. And um, yeah doing talking heads with Matt and watching Matt run or do anything very, very fast really makes me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, um, anything seeing Mark in his Colin Robinson bedroom is an absolute dream because it's so <laughs> terrific in there. It's a, great, it's a great set. Matt, what do you um, love? Anything where it's loose and, mm. you know, and um, we kind of, let loose to do whatever we want. I like doing the talking heads with Tash for things like seeing this out of the corner of my eye and <laughs> things like that. Stuff which you, which you can do on American TV, but not so easily over here because it's hugely offensive <laughs> doing that. And um, it's not I also great enjoy, here either. <laughs> yeah, and I also enjoy watching stuntmen do the things that I'm meant mm. to be doing. That's probably my biggest, biggest sort of thrill in the show. It's just standing that bit back and watching a stunt man do something that I'm meant to be doing for 10 minutes. <laughs> what I know. Well, I've heard you're afraid of heights, so that probably doesn't yep. help the, yep. K-Van let that out. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Did I? Yeah. You're getting better though, aren't you? I was trying to, Keep that under wraps, but it's impossible now. No. Mm -mm. Sorry. Mark, what do you love to do and watch other people do on the show? Um, I, I like Matt. I, you know, I like the group scenes when it's all loose, and it. it we're lucky because a, the writers give us so much leeway at times, and so we can really go off, and you don't know what someone's going to say, and like everyone has said, I, I find every single person on the show very funny in their own way. And so that helps a lot with making you look good when you're trying to come up with something. Um, what I like to watch, gosh, I, I, you know, I love watching Matt deal with uh, Kayvon um, because Matt just, you know, Laszlo can't tolerate fools, even though Laszlo's one of the biggest fools. <laughs> um, anytime Matt's being blustery and looks like the jackass, it's always funny to me. Um, I like my scenes with Kayvon a lot. It's always funny because um, we're such different dynamics um, character-wise. Um, and then anything where we're belittling uh, Guillermo is funny to me. Sure. Um, 
Yeah. And then like Tosh said, Tosh and I got on like a house on fire acting. So it's fun. Hang, sure. uh, hang on a sec. I got, oh. there's one other person who can answer. I don't know if she actually knows how to, how to uh, use the technology, but I sent the link. So I think we have a special guest who can join the zoom and maybe also answer that question. Let's see. Hmm. <laughs> oh, <there's>... <laughs> <laughs> um, welcome the Naja doll, I guess. Hi, uh, Benji. <laughs> she's on mute. Oh, she... uh, Naja doll, uh, try to button. unmute yourself. Press the button. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, she can't figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe uh yes or no questions do you like doing your scenes with uh natasha oh uh, okay. good answer <laughs> do you like doing scenes with um with mark uh, <laughs> listen this we had an incident last year and it, it didn't get out into the press that much but there's there's been some issues so. I'm taking notes. I'll call you about that later. <laughs> uh, uh, Nadia are you lonely without without see, having not seen the rest of the cast for a while? Oh, uh, that's uh, oh, she. Well, maybe. Let me see. Maybe if you cl close your close your lid and open it again, sometimes that'll reset the the mute thing. Let's see. If, yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, she's trying to. Oh, oh, no, oh, oh <laughs> now we lost her. Oh, oh that was. Well, if she comes back, we can we can ask some really probing yes. doll questions. Um, uh, <laughs> Stephanie, I, I know you had mentioned that um, in the writer's room, there are a lot of debates about sort of uh, what vampire life is like, what the whole lore of the show is, and that one of the real ongoing questions is what other mythical creatures show up or exist in this universe. I just wonder if you could tell me a little bit about like what mythical, like what the, the fun of bringing in new mythical creatures and then like what some of the debates are about what other ones may or may not exist. It's fun, but it's hard. No, you, you just sort of mentioned like, you know, the debates about vampire lore and, and that I feel like in and of itself is really difficult because vampires have been so often represented in media, stories, uh, movies, television, all that stuff. So I think like, it's sort of exciting because we have the ability to sort of pick and choose what we find exciting and fun about just vampires in general, but you know, it often leads to debates and contradictions and that sort of extends, I think, to mythical creatures in that way because there are so many and it's just, you know, we have so many to pick from. Um, so it is just a matter of having a debate and seeing if these characters slot in in a way that doesn't make the show feel too ridiculous, which also just feels like a ridiculous thing to say because <laughs> yeah. the show is so cartoonish, but it, I, we really want to ground, I feel like, these it's very It's a grounded vampire show, yeah, right? It's a very... Yeah. You don't want it to be too insane. I mean, for some reason, Paul, you remember, like, there, for some reason, Jermaine was very anti-leprechaun. Yes. And these are the kind of debates that we have, and for no reason other than he just didn't think that they would exist in this world. So I, 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 I came around to his way of, uh, of thinking somehow, but it is it, <laughs> it's it so, is kind of arbitrary. Yeah, there's no I feel like rhyme or reason for why we say yes or no to a lot of the creatures that end up in the show, other than I think how. I don't know, how do they contribute story wise and how are they funny and what ways are they funny and what ways uh, can they be, you know, basically show pieces for the cast and vampires mm. and interactive kinds of things. I think sure. it's another, another Comic-Con exclusive. I'm looking at the big board here that has all the scripts for next season. I think, <gasps> I think we meet at least three to four new kinds of creatures. Wow. Uh, I'm not saying what they are, except for the hell. E.T. <laughs> <laughs> is there any aliens? Um, no Ooh. aliens. Aliens would not exist. Well, actually, well, no. See, I don't know. See, that's another one where I'm just like, it feels wrong. That feels too crazy for our show for some reason. Aliens if, feels too if far. If vampires can be real, why, why can't aliens be real? But why not leprechauns? 
That's my question. Like, what is it about the leprechaun that is a bridge too far? Matt, you're shaking your head. Do you have an anti-leprechaun feeling? I don't. No, I don't. Mm. It's got nothing to do with me. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like sure. the scene that we had last year when we were fighting with Nandor and Guillermo. Like, that doesn't, like the ghost episode, where it was like, so those exist and vampires, but ghosts don't exist. Ghosts <laughs> <laughs> in real life as we're writing it is <laughs> the primary reason for why we say yes or no to things. <laughs> None of more from Sesame Street exist and make a cameo. Do they exist? Sesame uh, Street Muppets? I'm just thinking, I guess, well, Stephanie, I don't know what you're doing tomorrow, but if we can schedule another meeting, we could probably spend six hours making <laughs> <Yeah>. it. So, <laughs> uh, uh, into an episode, please. <laughs> <laughs> Natasha, what would Snuffle Up Against do on Shadows? I don't know. I just actually thought then. What well, actually, Miss Piggy would be better. Nadia would have some great chats. She's oh wow, Miss Piggy. And I, I feel like good. Kermit um, and Kermit would have a lot. Nandra and Kermit would have a lot to chill about. I think Guillermo should find R two D two buried in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, there are more Star Wars tie-ins, I guess, for the show. Uh, R two D two. We wouldn't great. know what it was. It would just be some tin can to us. <laughs> yeah. To us. Try to use it as a toaster or something, and just yeah. end up throwing it out. <laughs> um, Paul and Stephanie, I wonder, uh, so I know you have all of season three written. I'm just curious if there's any other bits that you could tease for us, just because I'm very excited and it cannot come soon enough. So There is about three quarters of a page that has to do with Kermit the Frog, actually, which is funny. <gasps> Natasha um, sort of accidentally came upon that. <laughs> um, there is, I won't say where they're going, but there's a whole episode where the vampires go on a road trip to a place they don't usually go, which is very difficult because for a vampire to travel, they have to carry the soil from their homeland to put underneath their bed when they sleep. Um, <laughs> One's there, having a birthday. Yes. There's a birthday. There's a big birthday. Mm. There's a big, yes, a big, a big important birthday for Colin Robinson, I think we can say. Oh. <gasps> oh, that's he's sixty. Uh oh, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of Colin Robinson drops. Mm. <laughs> um, there's, there is, uh, 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 oh, I don't want to give too much away. There's Nan, Nandor, but but Kayvon was talking about it earlier and his many wives. I there is a uh, there is a sort of theme in this season of of Nandor looking for love because he's been alone for such a long time and. Aww. Naja and Laszlo have each other, and uh, Mark and <laughs> Harvey don't seem to uh, uh, be the kind who date. Um, well, no, Mark's dated, but uh, but Kayvon is is deciding it's time once again to find a a, a lady to be or a, <laughs> just a, a partner. Sure. Um, and and also there's some there's some funny little ways that characters we've met along the way come back. Um, and Sean, the next door neighbor, features prominently in one or two episodes in a very funny way. Oh, amazing. So exciting. Well, I, it pains me to say this, but um, we have come to the end of our time. Um, I want to thank all of the panelists so, so much for, for being here. I want to thank uh, um, Paul and Stephanie for giving me little tiny tidbits that I can look forward to as far as what's uh, coming up next. Um, and obviously, you know, it, it is a hard and stressful time in the world. And this show has been really a, a beacon of, of light for me. And I know a, a lot of other people, um, even though there's a lot of sperm in it. I mean, it just sometimes that's what you need on TV. Uh, and so, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so thank you, thank you so, so, so much. Uh, and I want to close by thanking the official sponsor for this panel, Lucky Brews Bar and Grill. There once was a fabled persona. Drinks on the house. Who hailed from Tucson, Arizona. I am just a regular human guy. Oh. 
And when he's serving booze, it's at Lucky Brews. Just ask them for Daytona. Jackie Daytona. Come on down to Lucky Brews. We have all sorts of normal human alcohols. Human vodka, human gin, human drambui. This will blow your mind. <laughs> Take a load off at our billiards table. Put a load on, on with our delectable wings of chicken and genuine Arizonian Nacho chips. Mmm, that looks good, whatever it is. Don't be shy, come join the party at Lucky Brews. Virgins drink free. Cheers!